Wait a second, I'm recording at night? 7.22. Oh, I'm a workaholic. Got it, that makes sense. But you know who also is? Notion. Hey, let's go, Notion. You finally made subtasks. Or did you? Yeah, you did. And it's pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. It's a solid setup. And if you wanna see how I managed to get this guy to do this, make sure you just stick around to the end of this video because it was kind of a doozy. Because this, this is the same, this is the same one, but only that one. It's kind of a, I'll show you. So if we start a new page right here, what we're going to point out is the fact that for sub items database, you're only going to be able to use it for a few different database types. So if I do slash database here, make this full width because I want to, I'm gonna call this projects database. You notice that if I press the three dots and go here, sub items is an option. Now you're not gonna have it if you go to list because I guess, why would you? You're not gonna have it if you go to gallery, board or calendar, but you do actually have it and you have dependencies, which we'll talk about after that, after the, the first thing here. If we go to the table view once again and then press sub items, I'm gonna rename this to projects for the parent item and then subtask for the sub item and then press create and that will create a relation between those two things. Now if I click on here and have a new project and then click this little toggle and press this, you'll notice that this project example, the name will change here and this is essentially a sub item of it. So if I make this a real example project, revamp RP website, Shout out to the new riceproduct.com. Looks pretty slick. And we go here and we say, fix all of the SVG files. That's actually an issue that I was having on my website. And then update the second brain template page. You see that this ends up connecting back to the subtask. And if you wanna clean up the way that this looks, you can go here and hide this in the view. And since it's already toggled under here, it's a little excessive to show it, so we can hide that here too. I mean, low key, it's a little dumb that it's there. It was there and I didn't do it quicker. But if we go here and make a new checkbox by pressing new property and checkbox, you'll see here that we can also tidy this guy up and then go here. And then there's this little situation where all those checkboxes are unique. But something that I do wanna show you how to do that I actually did with my projects database is a nice little percentage calculator. So basically we can take this main project and do a progress bar. So before we make this progress bar, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to make a roll up really quick. We're gonna take a roll up. We're gonna go to the subtasks and then we're going to do checkbox and then do percent checked. So you can see where I'm going here. We can change this to sub tasks percentage. And then something else I wanna do is make a little status select property for the overall thing. So if we do a status property, I like to have a formula that looks something like, I like to have a property that looks something like this. Not started, in progress, completed on hold and archived. I will point out the fact that I'm using this instead of the status property because this works with make.com and Zapier for automation purposes. And I wanna point that out for people. So let's do not started here and then make sure that this status shows here. So if we go in to this progress bar formula, what really is nice is that we wanna make sure that we'd have a progress bar that figures out whether the tasks that are subtasks are completed or if it's just straight up completed based on the overarching status. So how'd you do something like that would be if I pressed, if I typed, if property status equals completed, and it would be one. And then if property, the checkbox equals true, then one else property sub tasks percentage, and then another quote in parentheses, couple times. So essentially what this is doing is it's saying, all right, well, if, if, is this completed? Yeah, it's completed. If not, okay, then is this checked off? Then yeah, it's completed. But what about these guys? Ah, then it's going along with the subtasks. So what we can do is we can change this to a bar since Notion was amazing, absolutely amazing. It gave us a progress bar by default this year, top tier stuff. And then we can change this to blue because I like that color, don't ask. And I can change this to a percent. And then I could redo it again because I forgot that's how that works. So then something I do recommend is that you go to the beginning of the formulas that you make and do round, put a parentheses, and then at the end do a times 100, then a parentheses, and then divide it again by 100. So that makes it so that it'll round. So if I show you this here, if I make another subtask, do an example, then check one off, you'll notice that it goes to 33%. If I 
don't have that, right? If I get rid of the rounding, yeah, we don't we don't want this 33.3. Repeating, of course, Leroy Jenkins reference. Um, and then if we wanted to see that progress bar in a way that made more sense than this guy, what would we do? We duplicate this, go into maybe a little board view. Ooh, and then we could see the different stages. So that started, say it was in progress then completed. And then we can change this to properties equals progress bar. And then very key here, we could filter this view to filter project is empty so that it would get rid of any of the subtasks that exist from this view. And then you could obviously see the subtasks and stuff like that in here. And then another way that you can look at this view. So by the way, if I check some of these off, bada bing, bada boom, it's showing that because I decided to not round it, but it would show that now rounded with the updated formula. And then if I go to complete, it would go to 100% because of the way that we set it up. So that could be a board view option. Then if we go here, we can also make a timeline, which would do the dependency. So if I change this to a timeline view, what you're going to see here is something a little bit different. If we press this, we'll see, okay, you got to use a existing relation. So what do I do here? What I got to do here is I'm going to assign some of these different dates. So let's pretend, for example, we have a project timeline with an end date that ends on the new year. Okay. And then we need to fix all these SVG files then, and then we can update the second brain page. And then we can post an email newsletter about the revamp on January 1st. What you can do here, as you see, if we untoggle this, it shows the different steps. But what if we press dependencies, then we use this existing guy right here. And what we got to do is we got to take this and then drag it here. So what will that do? That will take this and then do this. And that makes it so that if we then give it a dependency for subtasks, you can set this on all new project views or set on this view. So let's do an all new project views. There's going to be an order of the steps in which you're going to need to do it based on that dependency. Which for me, I won't lie, I really wish there was a way to look at this a little bit better and like the table view. I'm not really like a huge fan of this whole vibe, you know, like cool. I get to I get to see it sort of in in a in a dragging timeline manner, but like I'm not exactly too thrilled with like the way that that looks. I'd much rather see like, oh, if I look in like the table view or something. This is required before this is finished. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy, but that just seems a little bit better to me. Now, what if, for example, you wanted to view your projects and subtasks in their own page? You know, say you have notes, say you have a sync navigation bar like the Notion app system. What you do is, let's say we make a new thing within here. So if we go within here, what we need to do is we need to make a relation. And then we're going to pick this projects database. This is what we're using for the example. And we can press add relation. And I'm going to change this name to self relation filter. Now, this has been something very helpful for a lot of the different things that I've been using recently in my workspace. And if I press full width, then go to self relation filter, we can show that as minimal. And say, for example, we created a new template for new projects. Put a little wrench action there. And then we went back to this page here and we copied the link to this view. What we could do is we can go within this new project, paste this in here, and then have this filter to self relation filter, and then equals this new project template. And then also let's make a new subtask property and template. So if we did like a select property for type, we can pick subtask, and then we can make this main one a project, right? Then within here, we can set the default to a subtask for all of you in this projects. And then let's go back to this revamp RP website. What we're actually going to do is we're going to duplicate this into two examples. So example two, and we're going to go inside here and we're going to press new project. Now, first of all, you might be asking what the point of this is. You might want to have notes and other things just within the project and have a navigation bar within here, like I mentioned. But in this circumstance, it's like, huh, how do I get it so that this pops up and everything in it? Well, this is handy dandy add self relation filter and then bada bing, bada boom, you got it. And that's it. You don't have the other one. If you also want to self related to this, you can show this guy in there as well. And then if you add anything to it, it'll self relate it to that database. And then you got yourself only the sub items that are within that. Now you're noticing the subtasks don't exist that you made earlier. Well, the problem is that those aren't self related. So in a situation where you'd make a new template from scratch, when you'd be making a new subtask, these would be self relating and be using the template for subtask. And that progress bar would be working 
like this for the main guy, as you can see up here. So it's just a different way to utilize this new update. A lot of people weren't really talking about this kind of system, so I said, hey, is the way you can do it. Also, a quick shout out to another update that they did was the fact that in the table views now, you actually have the choice to show vertical lines or not. So as you can see down here in this area, a lot of people seem to like the fact that table views are a certain way and list views are a certain way. And this kind of gives us a happy medium for both. Rather than needing to see that divider, you can just untick it or you can take it back and forth. And it adds a different type of aesthetic to Notion, which is pretty nice. I think in the last few months, they've done a great job of updating the icon possibilities. They've updated the linked view icon possibilities by having you be able to do this and then be able to remove it and look like the table view again. And also on top of this, they've actually done a much better job recently when it comes to the templates that exist. So they added a onboarding system for templates and they've actually changed the way that this looks overall. Something that's been slept on for a while in Notion is the fact that too, if you like look for something like a bug tracker, for example, I'm like, ah, I can't really find it in the base one. I can go to the community and it will allow me to look within here. Okay, bug tracker. And then, okay, bug issue tracker. And I'm pretty sure there's gonna be, if I look through issues, yep, somebody's made a template for tasks and issues. And it just gives me a nice ability to go into a vetted template through the community rather than only being stuck with the different ones that exist within Notion by default. They've also done a great job of adding the baseline to have the icons in there, whereas in previous situations, they've only really done the emojis. So I do appreciate that as well. A lot of awesome updates recently with Notion. If you wanna see more tips on how to improve your productivity, make sure to check out this video right here.